Hey there, this is One Boom, and welcome to a quick video about economic competition. I hope you guys enjoy the video, and yeah, enjoy the video. Hope you enjoy the video, and I hope you enjoy the video. I hope that you enjoy the video. I hope you enjoy the video. The video will be starting soon. Enjoy it. Here comes the title sequence, and that's cue for you to enjoy the video. Alright, so before I get into the topic, I do want to do a brief channel update. Uh, I won't be doing daily uploads for the next two weeks. I'm going to be pretty busy, so I hope you guys can bear with me for that. Other than that, let's get into the topic, and that's economic competition. And uh, I used to think it was called economic. You can look it up. It's apparently economic, so if I accidentally say economic, it's just what I was raised with. So apparently it's economic, though. Um, so the thing about economic competition is that it directly benefits you, even if you don't realize it, and even if it's not at the same time. Uh, let me use it for instance. The best way to explain economic competition is by using an example. And I would say the Xbox Elite Controller and Scuff. When Microsoft released the Xbox Elite Controller, Scuff immediately came back with the Infinity One Controller. Now I believe the Infinity One Controller was more customizable than previous Scuff controllers, and it was obviously in direct competition with the Xbox Elite Controller. But the Xbox Elite Controller sold out within weeks, and the Infinity didn't. But still, if you were a Scuff fan, or you're looking to get a Scuff, and you didn't want the Xbox Elite controller, it kind of benefited you. This happens all the time with opposing companies. Just think, when Xbox added backwards compatibility to the Xbox One, allowing you to fully emulate an Xbox 360 on your Xbox One, very soon after, Sony went ahead and did backwards compatibility for PS2 games. In this case, the economic competition wasn't exactly equal, seeing how you had entire emulation on Xbox One, and just a simple put it in play of PS2 games. But I don't think they had any service support either, so if you wanted to play Call of Duty 3 online with people from PS2, you can't. It's just not going to happen. Unlike with Halo Reach on Xbox One, where I can put it in and play with people that are playing on either Xbox One or 360, causing there to be, I think, over 24,000 people online. And that game came out in 2010, so that's pretty impressive. Another unbalanced rendition of economic competition is when Advanced Warfare was adding in a ton of free weapons into the supply drops. Although it wasn't exactly content you got to go and use, it definitely brought in a lot of players that wanted to get those weapons. And when Sledgehammer Games added in the M1 irons to Advanced Warfare, Battlefield added I think four more weapons into their game. Battlefield 4 got the Mare's Leg Lever Action Rifle, the AN-94 Assault Rifle, and two Groza versions, a PDW and a Carbine, and it was pretty great for the Battlefield community. Four brand new weapons for free. Wait, they also added an L-85 light machine gun, so, sorry, five free guns. That's insane. Also, Hardline has released a bunch of guns for their game following that day the M1 irons came out for Advanced Warfare. Free weapons go across the board in the Battlefield games every time Sledgehammer Games added a new weapon. And this is no coincidence. Games have to do this. Games don't just want your money, they want your time. They want you to keep playing it, they want you to record clips of your game and share it with your friends, you, they want you to tell your friends about it, they want you to be enthralled with it. When your friends come into your room, they want you to be playing it, they want your family to be like, what are you doing? You want, they want you to say the name of their game. They want you to be involved in their game. So when a company starts adding free guns to an opposing first person shooter, the other shooter has to add free guns or free maps. And Battlefield added tons of free weapons and maps throughout their games over the last year. And when Black Ops 3 added uh, the new weapons into supply drops, Battlefront had just added new player skins a new map, well not really a new map, a, a survival mini game mode map that you can now play online game modes on, which is technically the same thing, going from an offline mode into online, but you get the picture. Also, Battlefront added private match features right when Black Ops 3 add, right before Black Ops 3 added the combat record system. Now I'm sure Treyarch had been planning on adding that for a while, seeing how it was in their previous games, but it still lines up. When games add content, games add content. It's a simple rule. You can watch when developers announce something they're adding into their game, you can watch an opposing developing team do the same. All the time, actually. 
Uh, when Battlefield adds something, Call of Duty adds something. When Halo adds something, Call of Duty adds something. When Battlefront adds something, Battlefield adds something. Games even compete within themselves, even if it's the same publisher. For instance, when Destiny would get huge patches adding a bunch of new stuff, that's also when Sledgehammer would start releasing updates. Economic, or economic, god, it's just a stupid word. It sounds like economic. The competition comes in when you have people trying to take money and trying to take players from your game. When you look to buy something, you look to do something, you look on the pros and cons list. And if your friend told you to buy Battlefield and you asked why, you could say the words, they add free maps and weapons, and you'd be like, what? That's crazy! And then you buy it. It's a dramatic simplification, but whatever. That's what happens. That's what they want you to be doing. They want you to play their game. So when you see Battlefield add something, wait for it to come to Call of Duty. Wait for something to call come to Call of Duty that's going to be a little exciting. When Halo 5 releases something, wait for it to come to Call of Duty. Something will always come to an opposing game, especially within the same genre. Next time Xbox gets a huge update, adding a ton of new features, wait for your PlayStation to get an update as well. And vice versa, if PlayStation adds a huge update, wait for something to come to your Xbox. It's a back and forth, a consistent back and forth. Over Valentine's Day weekend, me and my girlfriend were pretty excited to see that GTA 5, Battlefront, and Black Ops 3 had all added double XP weekends, events, new, new things. Black Ops 3 had double weapon XP and double XP for... I think three full or almost like four full days because it was a uh, Friday from 10, it started at 10 on Friday went to Monday anyway about four days of double weapon XP and double XP GTA 5 added a new weapon and a game mode and double XP and then or and double cash as well and then Battlefront added double score it's insane it's uncanny how many times game developers will do this now, if only one of those games had done double XP, I probably would have just played that one game. And that's wherein lies the truth. When you are making video games or you're making a product, other people are making similar games, similar products, similar services, and you have to compete with them. You have to make sure you have people's time and money. That's the very important part. Businesses just want my money and they're just greedy corporations. Yes, that's a good thing. That means that they want you to buy things. They want you to spend your time with their stuff. That means that they're going to add as much as they can to get you to buy what they're selling. Their DLCs have to be big. Their free content has to be great. Their updates have to be huge. They have to be exciting. Things have to intrigue you. Things have to make you get online. When I got a little bored of Black Ops 3 a couple weeks ago, I heard that they added a bunch of new stuff into supply drops. I went and gained up 700 crypto keys and over the couple weeks I spent all of them. I spent all of them on stuff, got a ton of new camos and stuff, no new weapons except for the crowbar, which is awesome, but it's just how it works, and I like it. To be honest, I like the fact that game developers do this. So you can share with me down in the comment section below, one, ideas for videos, because I'm obviously running thin, two, speech therapy classes, because I sound like I'm talking through a can, and also, I'm wondering if you have any examples of economic competition or economic competition god damn it that you can notice in your life and things that you've purchased and uh, subscribed to what did you notice because this also happens uh, between YouTube channels and writers and directors this kind of competition does not go unnoticed by the consumer and now that you've seen this video it won't go unnoticed by you as well hope you enjoy the video and I'll see you when I see you goodbye seriously it's like I'm talking while holding my tongue it feels like uh, 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 that's what I feel like. My tongue feels like thick. It's like banging against the back of my teeth. It's like, bleh, bleh, bleh. that just sounds stupid. Anyway, economic, economic, it's economic. I literally just, you know, no, stay with me. Stay with me. Stay with me, people. Uh, where's my recently closed page? Uh, how to pronounce economic. I'm going to turn this up for you guys. Listen to this. Economic. You hear that? Economically. Economic. Oh, that was loud as shit. But yeah, that's what it's like. It just in economic economically, it's it's stupid. It looks like economic. Like like echo or uh I guess it's ecosystem. But it's echo. You say echo but ecosystem and econ or economy, but this is bullshit. <laughs> I'm boycotting the English language. I'm done. I'm done. It's over. Bye. Nope.